Are you looking to contribute to Kestra, but you've got no idea where to start? Well, this is the video for you. I'm gonna walk you through all the different ways that you can contribute to Kestra and get involved with the project. There are a few ways that you can actually contribute to Kestra. The easiest is by contributing to our documentation. You can also contribute to the Kestra core application. So that's all of the UI, all of the things that happen behind the scenes. And you can also contribute to tasks and plugins. So perhaps you found a bug with a specific plugin that you're using, or maybe you found an issue that you'd like to fix. I'm gonna walk you through how you can best go around tackling these sort of problems and how you can get started. Now the easiest way to contribute to Kestra is by contributing documentation. Now a lot of people think that documentation contributions aren't that great when it comes to open source, but they can be super impactful. In fact, they can be some of the most impactful contributions you can make. So let's have a look at how you can get started. Now, let's say you're going through the documentation. You'll see that if you go through any of the pages in our documentation, you'll notice there is an edit this page on GitHub button. Now, if you click that, it will open it directly inside of GitHub where you can modify a markdown file. So if you spot any typos or any examples where they don't quite work, then you can come in here and edit them straight away. And then you can create a pull request to get those changes merged in. You can also just go to the docs repo as well. So here you can find that and all of the documentation itself is under content and then under docs. So here you can see all of the different subsections that we can see on the left hand side here. And if there's anything that you think is maybe not clear or has an error, then you can come in here, make a change and get a pull request opened. We love it when people send contributions in. So uh, be patient with us. We try and do our best to get to you as soon as possible. The other way of contributing to Kestra is by contributing to Kestra itself. Perhaps maybe you found a UI bug or maybe something else. Now, the best way to do this is using the new dev container support. Now, before I show you how that works, let's have a look at what issues there are that we could work on. Now, if you go to issues here, you'll see there are tons and tons and tons, and some of them are big, some of them are small. Now, my recommendation is if you filter by labels and then go to good first issue, what you'll see here is a good list of issues that should be relatively easy for you to jump in on. So for example here, we can see there's an issue here that was opened recently called improved the blueprints view. Now, if something on here is not clarified or you're not able to access something, then just leave a comment like this user did here and we'll try and give you more details and help encourage you get started. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We also have a contributors channel on Slack. So if you're interested in asking any questions or you're not sure where to start, then come in here, ask questions. The team can't wait to help you. Another way you can contribute to Kesha is contributing to tasks. Now you might find that perhaps when you go to plugins and let's say I click on this task here called execution.fail, you might spot an error inside of the example. Now to edit that example, what we can do is go to the Kesha repository, click on core, go down the few folders, main, Java slash IO, Kestra, then plugin slash core. And in here, you'll see a bunch of different types. And these types will actually match the categories you see on the left-hand side. So here I can see that there is an indentation problem here with this fail task. So now if I was to go to, uh, we can see that this fail task is under execution. So now if I go to the execution directory and then fail, what I can do here is now edit this file and I can see that example here is pasted in at the top here. So now what I can do is unindent that by one and now I can click commit changes, create a new branch such as a pull request and then open this as a pull request. The same premise applies for plugins too. If you head to our Kestra organization, you can see plugin uh, repositories such as plugin-gcp. And in here, if you go to again, source, main, java.io, and here then you'll see all of the different areas for that plugin. So let's say you found a problem with GCS, uh, you can go in here, maybe it's for the create bucket task. And so in here we can see the example, but we can also see some of the logic to go with it. So. Hopefully that will help you identify where different parts of Kestra are stored on GitHub. Now let's talk about how you can actually make a contribution and get Kestra running locally. Now, first things we're gonna do is create a fork of this repository. We're gonna just simply do it like so. And, and now I'm gonna have a fork of Kestra, but it's gonna be under my user rather than Kestra-io. I can press on the clone button here, head over to my terminal, and now I can do a git clone of our new fork. Now I can navigate into our fork and then I can open it inside of VS Code. And this is where we're gonna use the new dev container support that was just added in our latest release to make development a little bit easier. 
what I can do now is see it pops up automatically and now I can reopen this inside of a container. So now I'll develop Kestra in a container which has all the dependencies I need to run it locally. So now let's do that. We'll see it's gonna spin up a container so we can see it's starting to pull a Docker image. And then what we'll be able to do is start working with Kestra. To get this working, let's go to the dev container folder and have a look at the readme file. When we open up the dev container readme, we'll see it says a few things. First, for first things first, for being able to get uh, it working, we need to create a new uh, EMV file. So env.development.local. And here we're gonna put in this command here, like so. Next up, we need to then go to the CLI source main Java, main resources, and then we're gonna create a new application-override YAML. Now what this will do is basically tell us how we wanna best run Kestra. So I'm just gonna add that in like so. And then what I'm gonna do is look at the different modes for running it. Now I'm gonna go for the simplest option, which is just running Kestra as a standalone. It's gonna just run it in one uh, as one container here, and it's going to enable cores so that we can talk to the front end. Now, if I go here, I can paste that in like so. And now once I've done that, I can actually start uh, our UI front end. So we can open a new terminal, navigate to the UI. I can do an npm install here so that it will install all of our dependencies inside of that UI directory. Now that npm install has run, we can do npm run dev, and here it's going to then spin up the front end of Kestra, and we can see that it's ready to go, so let's open that inside of our browser. I can now open up localhost 5173, which is the port the front end's running on. Now the interesting thing is when this starts up, this is just the front end, so it's gonna return a lot of 404s because it can't get anything from the Kestra API yet. But we can see here that we've got all of the different UI elements, we can click on different things here, uh, we can see whether they're working or not. So if you're fixing something that is just front-end orientated, this is a great way for being able to test that it works without having to spin up all of Kestra. For example, like maybe you're just doing something in the settings menu where there's something that's not quite styled correctly. Now that this is running though, we can open up a new tab. We can go back to the main directory. And now what we're going to do is run Kestra. So if we go down, we can see that uh, in a new terminal, we can then run the Gradle W run local. And now this is going to start up Kestra on the back end side. So let's wait for this to install and then we'll be able to run Kestra locally, make changes to it, all inside of a container where we haven't had to install the dependencies like Java and Node. And just like that, Kestra is now running on port 8080, and we can see that it's running locally. So now if I go over to port 8080, we can see that we're now running Kestra. I can click on all of the different tabs on the front end, but they're now loading because the back end is communicating with the front end. So now I can make major changes to Kestra and see them in, you know, test them locally before opening my pull request. So uh, hopefully that will make development a little bit easier if you want to jump in on some of these issues, but actually see them working, not just guess when you're making the changes. Now, when it comes to actually making the pull request, there are a few things you can do to make our lives really easy, but also help others understand what you've done. First things first is, here this user has added a quick video just to showcase what they've actually fixed and changed inside of Kestra. Here, it's just key bindings for increasing the font size. So we can see here very clearly that that works. Now, not everything will need a video or a screenshot, but this can be quite useful for helping us understand what your change does before we even tried running it. Also, potentially some commands on how we can run it or run your code locally if there's something a bit niche about it. And so here we can see it's all working as expected. As you can see here, one of our developers, Milos, has uh, approved this pull request and merged it in. Another good example is if this is closing a specific issue, mentioning that issue inside of the pull request is super useful because sometimes we might not understand why you've made a change. And if you're not sure if the change is worth adding, add it as an issue first so we can discuss with you, let you know what we think, maybe give you some feedback, and then you can jump in and get started contributing. So here, very simple problem, just talking about the filter to bar is too large and it should be resizable. And here, this user's jumped in, made it smaller, uh, or changed the size of it and also made it resizable. So here we can see a quick video again of how it's working, but we can also see, um, yeah, just makes it really easy for us to understand what your change is. And uh, as a result of that, we'll probably approve your pull request and merge in much quicker than if you leave the pull request window blank. It just helps us understand 
why this change exists, does it actually work, have you tried testing it, and whatnot. So if you want to get involved in contributing to Kestra, these are a few things I would 100% recommend in uh, doing as part of that. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the comments below. You can always join our Slack, and you can talk to us in the Contributors channel too, where we're actively looking and answering your questions to help you contribute to Kestra. I can't wait to see what contributions you make to Kestra. Let us know in the comments below if you're interested in getting started in open source, and you're looking for more tips on how you can get started with projects.